This is a demonstration of the power flow through an Allison 1000 uh, six-speed automatic transmission. This transmission is used in 2001 through current uh, Chevrolet and GMC uh, heavy-duty trucks, in particular with the Duramax 6.6 liter uh, diesel, uh, the Isuzu Duramax that General Motors uses. This transmission uh, has gone through four generations and possibly a fifth for 2011 of changes and uh, 2001 was all by itself it was a five-speed transmission but yet all the components of the main planetary uh, gear sets uh, were still there uh, so it could have been a six-speed uh, had they had programmed it the TCM the transmission control module uh, to have six gears uh, then there was a 2000 a change in 2002 um, some software changes to have some uh, increased uh, pleasantness, I guess, uh, decrease harsh shifts, uh, particularly downshifts, but this had a hard upshift, hard downshift, even an engine flare-up uh, during shifting because this, this Allison transmission is a transmission that does what's called a clutch-to-clutch -clutch shift, which means it shifts just like a manual transmission meaning that in between each shift it goes to neutral. So to go from first to second we have first gear, then we go to neutral, then we go to second. Um, and they had the timing uh, not quite right on those. Uh, we had a lot of customer complaints on this thing about the oil pump uh, being noisy at an idle. So in 2004 they added a solenoid G to these, the uh, valve body which only was used at idle and would turn down the line pressure from uh, maximum uh, down to a lower uh, pressure to where the pump wasn't as noisy. And then in 2006, they went to the fourth generation uh, controls, turned it into a six speed, uh, did not add any additional solenoids to make it a six speed or any additional parts. Uh, it's my understanding uh, there's software changes, a computer change, and possibly some uh, valve body uh, and case changes uh, corresponding to the sixth gear uh, addition. And then in 2011, for the new Duramax uh, with the uh, increased power uh, for the 2010 Tier 4 emission standards, uh, that engine has close, that Duramax engine has close to 800 pound feet of torque, so they did some. Uh, modifications to strengthen the transmission for 2011. So what I'd like to start with is showing you the parts of the Allison transmission. Uh, what I have here is actually what's inside the torque converter. This is called the turbine and it's hooked to the input shaft here. And so if the turbine turns uh, then power can flow uh, into uh, the transmission. But there is no direct connection uh, between the input shaft and the output shaft unless we have some clutches uh, apply. This input shaft connects to the C1 clutch housing, the C2 clutch housing, and the rotating clutch module. And this piece right here is the rotating clutch module. This entire thing fits over the input shaft and splines to this piece here. So these teeth inside of here spline to this and the input or this rotating clutch module is also splined to the input shaft. So if the input shaft turns at all, so does this uh, piece of metal here. And this piece of metal is hooked to the sun gear of our first planetary gear set. This thing has three planetary gear sets. They're quite easy to remember. This one's called the P1, or planetary gear set number one, P2, and P3. So three planetary gear sets. Uh, there are also three clutch packs that connect to those planetary gear sets as far as the ring gear is concerned. We can see the ring gear on the outside of these three uh, planetary gear sets. And uh, clear in the back of the transmission back here, we have the C5 clutch pack, which has six fiber plates and seven 
uh, steel plates and it splines here. Uh, the fiber plate splines to the, the ring gear. The steel plate splines to the case and when that clutch applies it stops the P3 ring gear uh, from rotating. And then we have the P4. I'm sorry, it stops, yeah, P3. Then we have the P or the C4 clutch that stops the P P2 ring gear from rotating. So we have a C4 clutch. Turns out the clutch disc is discs are the same for the uh, C4 clutch and the C3 clutch, which stop the P1 and the P2 ring gears. And then they have the same metal uh, plates that spline to the case. Uh, the difference between the C3 clutch and the C4 clutch is the C3 clutch has four fiber discs and uh, five steel discs, where the C4 clutch has five fiber discs and six uh, steel plates. And so these three ring gears here with the C3, C4, and C5 clutches stop when those clutches are applied and then the power coming in from the input shaft connects to the C1 clutch. This is a clutch disc and still played out of the C1 clutch. As you can see it's much smaller but it can be much smaller because we've got a first gear ratio of 3.10 to 1 so it's 3.1 times easier to move the vehicle in first gear so we can have a clutch disc that's 3.1 times smaller and still handle the same torque and load. Um, and then it has, oh, I forget how many clutch discs it has, it's, it's a, I think it's six. It's a pretty good uh, number of the C1 clutch discs. And the C1 clutch is going to connect the input shaft to this C1 clutch housing. The C1 clutch housing connects to an intermediate shaft that goes down the middle of these planetary sets and it connects to the two sun gears that are in the P2 and the P3 uh, gear set. And then we have an output shaft back here. So there's three shafts on this transmission. We have the input shaft, the intermediate shaft that's underneath all of this, and our output shaft. Um, then we have the C2 clutch, and you can see it's a little bit larger uh, than the C1, but it's not quite as large as the C3. They're close, but the C2 is a little bit larger. The C2 clutch discs are going to spline to this out, outer housing uh, right here, and it grabs the planet carrier of the P2 um, planetary uh, gear set, and, uh, and then it, it has fire, or steel plates also. But unlike these three clutches, that when they apply, they stop these three pieces from rotating. These two clutches up here, the C1 and the C2 clutch, when they apply, they connect power from the engine through the turbine input shaft to the C1 clutch and the C2 clutch. They connect power to our planetary gear sets. So we have power going to the intermediate shaft, which drives the two sun gears in the middle here. We have power going to uh, the, the C2 clutch, which drives the planet carrier of the P2, and then we have power going to this metal piece, which drives the sun gear of the P1, uh, always. So for each set of planetary gear sets, we can get two forward gears. This is a six-speed transmission. It's also a five-speed if, uh, if you're talking about the Allison 1000 prior to uh, 2006 uh, model year. So what I'd like to do is show you how the six forward gear ratios are obtained and how uh, reverse is obtained. Uh, first thing, uh, uh, for first gear, we're going to have the C5 clutch apply, which is going to stop this P3 ring gear from rotating. And then we're also going to apply the C1 clutch, which is this, this housing right here. So we're going to have the C1 clutch turning, because it'll be connected to, through the turbine and the torque converter to the input shaft. We're going to have this, the P1 sun gear turning at the same time. Um, and we'll have the C5 uh, clutch applied holding this, the P3 sun gear. And so this should give us a 3.1 turns of the input 
to one turn of the output. And you can see uh, over here that I've got uh, these, uh, I've got the output shaft labeled. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see uh, the labels a little bit better uh, as we do this. And uh, so we'll watch how, how many times it takes to turn the, the input to get one turn of the output. For first gear, it should be 3.1. So I'm going to grab the C1 clutch housing and this rotating clutch housing uh, and I'll hold the C5 clutch from turning and uh, then we'll see if, uh, see if we get 3.1 uh, turns of the output shaft. So let me zoom back out a little bit so you can see the whole thing. Here we go. One, two, three, and about a tenth more, 3.1 turns of the input to get one turn of the output. These planetary gear sets, by the way, are huge um, compared to any other uh, half ton, three quarter ton, one ton truck, uh, automatic transmissions. These are monsters. This, this transmission is a big heavy duty uh, transmission. Everything is really heavy, but it's a very uh, reliable transmission. It's been uh, very, very trouble free. All right, well that was first gear. So that was holding the C5 clutch, turning the C1 clutch and the rotating clutch module. Uh, to go to second gear, all we do is release the C5 clutch and apply the C4 clutch. We keep the C1 and the rotating clutch module turning, so we have to let go of the C5, go to neutral, then grab the C4 clutch, and this should give us 1.8 turns of the input to one turn of the output. So here we go. You can see the output's turning a little faster. There's one turn of the input. And not quite a full two turns, 1.81 to one gear ratio, and we've got one full, full turn of the output. So that's second gear. Uh, to go to third gear, we have to let go of the C4 clutch and now grab the C3 clutch. So we've just moved right up the planetary gear sets. First gear, second gear, third gear. Uh, except now, uh, for third gear, besides... Um, well, no, that's it. We're still going to turn the C1 clutch and this rotating clutch module. Now, third gear has a gear ratio of 1.4 to 1, so our output shaft should turn even faster. So here we go. I'll turn it. We've got one turn in and about four-tenths of a turn, and we've got a full turn of the output. So that's third gear of 1.4 to 1. Fourth gear is direct drive, and direct drive means one turn of the input gives us one turn of the output, and in fourth gear we let go of all three of these holding clutches, sometimes they're referred to as brakes, and instead we're going to apply, we'll keep the C1 clutch applied and turn the rotating clutch module, but now we're also going to apply the C2 clutch. So that means all three of these pieces here are going to be hooked to the input shaft and the whole thing will just turn as an assembly. So here's fourth gear, one turn in equals one turn out. Okay, now we're going to shift into fifth gear. To have fifth gear we need to apply the C3 clutch and turn the C2 clutch. Um, these parts are very heavy and difficult to turn, especially in the overdrive uh, gear range, and so let me line up our, our sticker here uh, to get um, fifth gear, I'm going to have to use a little helper tool here to help me turn that C2 clutch housing uh, for overdrive. So we should have about 0 0.71 turns of the input. There we go. To one turn of the output. Everything's kind of on a bind here in these uh, V blocks, so it makes it more difficult to turn, especially uh, in overdrive. Now sixth gear is actually double overdrive. 
Uh, fifth gear was 0.71 turns of the input to one turn of the output. Sixth gear is 0.61 turns of the input to one turn of the output. And in sixth gear, we'll let go of the C3 clutch and we'll just go back to the C4 clutch and continue turning uh, with the C2 clutch and the rotating clutch module. So now we should have less than half a turn of the input to get one full turn of the output with the C4 clutch applied. So here we go. You can see that's really spinning quickly on that output. There we go. Six tenths of a turn in, 0.61 turns in to one turn out. So this is the Allison 1000 transmission. The internals, we've got five clutches, C1 clutch, C2 clutch, C3 clutch, C4 clutch, C5 clutch. We've got three planetary gear sets, P1, P2, P3. This great big gear right here is your parking gear where your parking pawl is gonna come in and lock the output shaft from turning. There's monstrous bearings on the output, gigantic torque converter on the input. This transmission is a very heavy duty and turning out to be a very reliable uh, automatic transmission.